That's into right field. Long run for Pilar. And Pilar all out into foul territory to make the play. Bogarts with a drive out to right field. Judges back on it, and that one's gone. Against all odds. Here's a high fly ball driven deep to right. Verdugo back to the pen. Leaps up. He caught it. He caught the ball. He took it back. And I will keep on waiting for a better day. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the pesky poll podcast episode 67 the old ish brandon workman episode of course not on the team and he didn't wear the number in his last year but y'all get the idea we got a great episode for you guys joining me this fine sat saturday we usually record on saturdays it's now sunday let me get my stuff together is the host of down to the wire brian costa brian what's going on i'm good man how you doing we're not doing too bad we're not doing too bad I just went to church relaxing sunday all that fun stuff i hope the fans are having a great day as well and i'll be able to hang out with them later for the youtube premiere around seven o'clock tonight yeah so, same here uh and the the other thing about this episode that's pretty good too is uh we're recording it right as the red Sox are playing the orioles right now so if any live updates happen we'll be able to oh, tell me, you guys about that let me load that up too so i can see and <laughs> just yeah. watch a game well, as yeah, well, it's currently it's bottom of the first with one out, so not, nothing has happened just yet. And we'll see. I'll keep I'll keep it up, and we'll let you guys – well, they'll already know, obviously, by the time. Oh, yeah, but they'll know. it works perfectly for the fans because they can sit here and watch the Red Sox while we're recording, and then they can watch Our us. live reaction. You know? Exactly. exactly. I, I think about this stuff. Not really, but sometimes <laughs> – Sometimes it comes – Sometimes it works. All right, Nick Pavetta is pitching, which I am very happy about. But mm-hmm. – Let's get right into the episode. For YouTube, you get to see me and whatever guests I have every single week, twice a week, but not next Tuesday. You guys will see. I have something kind of – I'm doing it for the memes, damn it. I no know. one knows about it yet, but I'm doing it for the memes. Okay? I, can, I can definitely guarantee it is officially – it is for the memes, so, All right. uh, stay, so stay tuned. <laughs> yes, exactly. We'll see if we – I'll see if I can have you, Adam, and like a bunch of the people on the show because why not? Yeah. Make it something big. It'll be why on a Tuesday. It'll be on a Tuesday, which, eh, we'll, we'll make it work. We'll make it work. Yeah. So Tuesday might be tough, but I'll try my best. We'll figure it out. We, yes, so, we will. Um, but YouTube, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button with notifications. You can see every time I go live, mostly twice a week, Spotify and iTunes gang. I never forget about you guys. How you guys doing today? Hopefully you guys are listening and relaxing and enjoying some Red Sox baseball also as we're recording this. Make sure you hit that follow button so you can see every time that I go live. Once again, mostly twice a week. With that, follow the Instagram at Pesky Paul Podcast. Let's get right into it. Actually, before we get into it, Brian, you got anything else to say to the fans? Uh, you know, in terms of, I mean, I guess I can do a shameless plug myself. Uh, yeah, you I know, did it on your show. Yeah, absolutely. So if you guys want to follow my podcast as well, it's uh, you can find it, you know, basically in every and everywhere where you can uh, where you can find uh, Robert's podcast. Uh, I think iTunes is I'm still working on that. Uh, but uh, Spotify. That's... But yeah, it, that, that, that's a whole other world. But mm-hmm. Spotify, Google Podcasts, YouTube as well. Uh, we have a Facebook page. We even uh, but, you know, the main hub that we do everything through is our Instagram. And you can follow that at down dot to the wire again at down dot to the wire. You know, just like that, uh, you know. So, you know, uh, you know, we talk about pretty much everything sports. If there's a breaking sports moment, you know, you know, usually within the major uh, four American sports, but we, but we talk some UFC as well. Sometimes you, we'll probably be reviewing a little bit of the masters when, uh, w- when that wraps up on our next show. So, you know, w- you know, if there's a big, if there's a big enough moment in sports, we're going to definitely cover it. So, you know, we, we film on, we uh, try to put out what uh, episodes on Wednesdays and Fridays of each week. Uh, and that's kind of how we do things too. I got you. I got you. And his stuff will be linked, his Instagram and his Spotify, because I know the majority of my fans that listen consistently use Spotify. So both those will be linked down in the description. First off, Garrett Richards finally shaved the mustache, and he looks so much better. All right. That's the breaking news. And let me tell you, baseball is a very, very superstitious game. Am I right? Oh, no. You're 100% right. (laughs) Yes. So – with stuff like this, it's the little things, the little things that make it superstitious, right? 
Garrett Richards is going to pitch so much better now that the mustache is gone. All right, he is now down to a 10-point-something ERA that we don't want to talk yeah, about. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's 10-29 if, if we have to delve into specifics. But, yeah, uh, it's, it's better than what it was. I'll give you that. It is better than what it was, so that is for sure. Hey, at the very, very least, they came back last night on Saturday night down in the ninth inning once again. And came back to win it in the 10th, 6-4. to four. This is the second time this week Boston tied a game in the ninth. The other one was against the Rays on Tuesday and won an extra innings. Thank you. I believe it was Kike mm-hmm. for that yeah. one. Yeah. Like, I don't yeah. know what you think about this team, but this team's got some fight in it. They definitely do. I mean, uh, you know... I, it's very easy for me to get sucked into the pessimism of, you know, like hearing like all the sports talk about the Red Sox when, you know, after that three game sweep, it was just an embarrassing, you know, show show for this team. And, you know, hearing that pessimism, I was kind of, you know, on board with it because, you know, maybe it was going to give them maybe it was going to, you know, start the fire that they could actually use to maybe get out of this. And, you know, you know, I've had I've had my qualms uh, with Heim Bloom and the way he's done things. Personally, I'm I am not on the Heim Bloom train. I don't know how long. I don't know if it's if it's going to be the solution that ends up working. I don't know if he's going to be the guy that ends up building Boston to a championship, or maybe you know he maybe it's almost like the Dan Duquette situation you know earlier on oh. where where you know I, where it's like there are pieces that a guy like that puts in place, and then you bring in another guy like you bring in like a Theo type that you know puts it all into fruition, and that's how you kind of do it. Whereas like, you know, like Dan Duquette got some pieces here, but then Theo obviously made that final push, got it over the hurdle. And that's how that went. So I don't know if that's how, how if that's what Heim will end up being. I mean, we'll have to wait and see, but uh, you know, obviously I'm, I'm much happier with a five game win streak than that, than that terrible sweep. Oh my God. I don't, this, like, like I said on your show that was on yesterday, this team, not yesterday, the day before, was it Friday? Yeah, it was Friday. Yeah. Friday. So this team is going to be a very much up and down team. Yeah. Right. It's not going to be a team that's just going to be, we're going to win one, lose one, 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 lose one, 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 lose. No, we're going to win five, then lose four, then win exactly. six more, then lose three, then win three, then lose seven. Mm-hmm. No, they're de- Yeah. No, they're definitely going to be a team that at times you will really piss you off. But uh, at other times, you know, you'll, but, you know, I'm hoping that it's at the point where they don't piss you off off enough that it deters you from going to the ballpark, which, you know, after that sweep, it looks like it was going to be that sort of a product. It looked like it was going to be the 2020 Red Sox that we saw that were historically bad. It looks like it was going to be that sort of a product that, you know, even with capacity limits at Fenway Park, people were going to somehow find a way not to fill that anyways. But, you know, it looks like it will be at least a seemingly watchable product this year. Obviously it's still very new into this season. So we're going to have to wait and see how that all works out. But uh, I, I am, you know, I am, you know, much happier after seeing the way that things have gone lately. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And to get on um, people, obviously the the media obviously asked Garrett Richards about his mustache. And he said, wearing the mask all the time, it was kind of eating, um, I was kind of eating that thing most of the time. My wife was super pumped about shaving it off. I'd been growing it for over a year and periodically would tell her today's the day, today's the day. I got off the couch the other day to get ready to go to the field and it just kind of felt right. I wouldn't say it was a little bit of a 50-50 moment I actually did it, but it's gone, so we're moving on. It was over a year. To grow a mustache over a year is kind of an investment, so I'll check off the list of things to do during your lifetime. Now, I don't know about you, but I've never been a guy to grow any facial it just doesn't look good on me no i mean i yeah. I, I remember during like i remember during a quarantine when it a fit when it originally started like you know like in march and april and like you know a little bit into may i tried like doing like a little goatee action but it just looked terrible so so, so i was just like i'm never like gonna do this until i can actually grow facial hair again mm-hmm. i mean i mean so i'm so i'm no facial hair expert but i mean just looking at the way that uh garrett richards looked and like that's what a year could get out of you i'm just like i don't know like yeah. that's i mean maybe not the you know, maybe not the most impressive year of your time, if that's all you're going to end up bringing to the table. <laughs> no, and it, like I, like I said, when we said it's very superstitious. Oh, yeah. percent. Like I said, for the people that watched last week, when we had Cole Brennan on, right? He, if you go and look at the stats, he was never the best hitter, right? He's saying all this stuff about putting work in and getting to the weight room and really focusing on his hitting. I mean, that's obviously going to help. But what's oh, yeah. really going to help him is by changing that walk-up song from goddamn Nickelback. <laughs> Ain't nobody getting pumped 
and putting up efficient baseball numbers while listening to Nickelback. Well, it well it also makes you like you know it also makes you public enemy number one just because of how people view Nickelback in general. Uh, but yeah, it kind of makes me wonder what I mean. I had a couple of baseball uh, you know superstitions of my own. What were some of yours? Um, I was kind of the same as him, especially my senior year of high school. Yeah, the biggest superstition that I had is one of the, um one of the big songs that I listened to was Guts Over Fear from Eminem. Mm-hmm. That okay, was yeah. that was one of my like true hype up songs. Yeah. Um other than that, I made sure that um I was always lead off hitter in high school. So yeah. every time we went to an away game or even at home, I'd be the first one up, you know, tap the catcher on the knee pad, say what's good, good luck, show some love to the ump. So that way I get a little more calls in my favor. Something my dad always taught me. <laughs> He's like, if you're gonna be a leadoff hitter, you need to at least say something nice to the ump right when oh, the yeah. game starts. You're gonna be better. Yeah, just 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 a little just a little how you doing blue, like anything like that. Mm-hmm. And always gets them always gets them in your favor a little bit. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And then the pitcher started getting pissed. It was <laughs> it was great, you know. Yeah. But other superstitions, I always went high socks. Oh yeah. That's what I never went low sock it was always high socks for me i never had the pants that could do high socks so if you had to so if you wanted to do it you had to like cuff them and like they would never stay up so i just i just said screw it and i just did like the low pants because i was like i'm not trying to like fight for this mm-hmm. like, oh i even like, told my coach i'm like i need to do high socks so we get <laughs> yeah do we have any extra pants we went through all of our uniforms because our school had no budget for baseball oh yeah so we went through all of our old uniforms he's like well these pants work they were a little tight around the waist. I was I was a very skinny guy in high school. They were yeah. very they were a little tight around the waist, but I can pull them up and they would stay. And I'm like, these are it. They'll they'll do exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, for me, I didn't really have you know. Again, I mean, obviously, you had like the certain music that you'd listen to beforehand. Uh, you know, one thing I'm, I guess I could think of is like you know when when you're like doing warm when you're doing warm ups before the game and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. At least at least in my home field when when we would do this is like you know when you're trying to get your arm loose. You know, I mean I'm an outfielder, so it's not like I'm you know worried about getting my arm too fine, like too you know precise. But I remember like after I'd be done with uh after I'd be done like throwing with my like with my like throwing partner, I'd be like walking back and like we have like a batting cage set up and like you know if like just because like you know you don't you obviously don't want to air it out too much and then like hit someone so like mm-hmm. i would sometimes just like f- like wind up and just fire into that thing just to like just like essentially get the bugs out essentially uh and then at the plate you know obviously you, you have, there are always like those weird idiosyncrasies you have when you walk up i mean i know i would always like tap the outside corners of each plate and like the main thing i did is i would like flip the barrel around like i would spin the barrel and then i would mm-hmm. bring it up like there were just like little things like that that i would do mm. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. But um, I, I was just I was just looking back at the game to see what happened. Bobby Dahlbeck has a point oh nine batting average right now. That is terrible. What are you doing, Bobby? Ugh. I mean, uh, yeah, it's so tough. <laughs> I don't know. Still, still nothing. Nothing. Middle of the yeah. second. Nothing. Nothing too crazy. But Ken, I am looking at a screen right now, and mm-hmm. it shows me that the Red Sox are in first. In the AL East. Yes, we are. It now, us crazy. Red Sox fans have been waiting since 2018 to see this. We, I don't think we have seen this more than five games in since 2018. I'd probably agree with you. It's been, you know, I mean, obviously 2019 was just a season where, you know, you had like, it, that was a, that was a team that just pissed you off because, you know, they had the same potential pretty much of that 20 of that 2018 team, but you know, they just never got the, fu- they just never got rolling the way that mm-hmm. the 18 did. You want to, you want to know the best thing about the screen I'm looking at though? What? The team in last place. The New York Yankees. Mm-hmm. Abs- that is good. That is a beautiful thing. Now, right. now, I mean, what are the odds that this all flips by the end of the year? I mean, you know, Toronto has a chance to really do some things this year. Tampa's, you know, right in the middle of the pack, which is surprising people. But after, you know, shipping Snell off to San Diego really shouldn't be that uh, surprising. Mm-hmm. You know, I could, I, I mean, it looks like, you know, I mean, this team, like these standings could very well flip by the end of the year. Oh, they're still very close and it's still way too early to de- yeah. decide anything, you know, mm-hmm. like, let me just check through and see if any teams are like truly surprising yet. Um, Twins are five and three, which I don't know. Astros are six and three. Screw the Astros. 
<laughs> Athletics are three and seven. Yeah, that that has been like the main story so far from what I've seen. Like they just have been off to a terrible start so far. Mm-hmm. Phillies are in first. Mm-hmm. I can I don't expect it, but Cincinnati's doing well. That's not going to last. No, it will not. Dodgers are obviously in first. Padres are doing well. How are the Mets doing? What are the Mets? Mets are two and three. Yeah, they're not doing too hot right now, man. Wait, why are the Mets? Why have the Mets only played five games? I think COVID. Uh, oh. I think they, there was like I think they were supposed to play the Nationals at the start of the year, if I'm correct. And then there was a COVID pause because of it. Um, oh. Because I I think it like a bunch, I think like eleven players or something on the Nationals tested positive. It, something Jeez. like that happened. So like yeah, their season got delayed a little bit. You you hate you hate to see stuff like that. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's tough. Ugh, but throughout this five game winning streak that we've gotten, it's it's I don't know how to describe. It. Like I said, this team is going to be very streaky. Yeah, you know that almost all Sox fans can agree with. But mm-hmm. throughout this five game winning streak, this team has just seemed on. Right, yes. they they just have a different hunger. They're just tenacious. I'm not sure what's different about it, but it seems like in some cases they're just so excited to have fans back. They're showing more emotion. You know, you see the guys, right? Somebody hits a double and they're celebrating. Yeah. You know, you didn't see that at all last year. No, no. All right. You get you get JD Martinez hitting a double down the left field line. He gets up the second base. He's doing the swivel hips. All right. It, it's great. I love it. Yeah. You know. No, it's great. And I think the thing that, you know, a lot of a lot of people, you know, are now realizing about this team, you know, in 2020, I think all the guys on that squad knew that this knew that it was 100 percent like not going to be here, that they were competitive whatsoever. Ron Renneke was not going to be able to get was not going to be was not going to be able to go into that clubhouse and like rally the troops or anything like like they like I feel like they had to have known that Cora was probably in the mix or something was going to, you know, probably happen like along along those lines. And they, and you know, it was not going to be of any use for Renicky to, to kind of be like, let's go, guys. We can really compete this year. We can make a push. Like, no, it's not going to happen. Oh, screw but, Ron Renicky. Yeah. They all knew that. And I think Vasquez, who he came out on Twitter and he even, he even said, hey, season starts today. So, yes. uh, you know, I think, I think after seeing, you know, the way they fell flat against the Orioles, they, they decided to say, all right, we need to actually turn it on now. We cannot be like, we cannot just be going through this as sluggishly as we are. And you're seeing some results right now. I mean, you know, obviously, you know, you know, we, you know, you, it was really good to see the way that they performed against the Rays. Uh, the Orioles were, I mean, obviously, you know, they're, they're again, you know, one of the worst teams, if not the worst team in the American league, but they long. always start off hot. Yeah. And they no always play the why. Red Sox well too. Yeah. And they always play the Red Sox. Well, mm-hmm. it's, it's weird. They they remind me, they're the MLB version of the Orlando Magic. <laughs> All right, okay. and for my non basketball fans out there, the Orlando Magic basically come out every year, and they are like a top three seed after like twenty games played, and then they suck. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, it. I I can't say anything about them. They they're just weird. You know, they're definitely very they're definitely a very weird team, and they kind of remind me of like. Uh, you know, even like the Toronto Blue Jays or like the Tampa Bay Rays, like back in like 2013 or something. I mean, uh, the Rays were in second place then, but like, you know, in 2013, you know, I felt like even, you know, when the Red Sox were making their run, each team in our division was giving us a good, was giving us like good battles in and out, like mm-hmm. every night. Like yes. I never felt like, I never felt like we purely dominated one of those teams, you know? So I think that, so I think that Baltimore is always just going to be a challenge just because we play them so many times, you know, it's not like they can, it's not like they can, it's not like like they're 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 gonna be able to figure out your game plan Mm -hmm. and then they're and you're gonna have to find different ways to beat them so that's the problem that you face with baltimore if it was if it was a one-off or like say they were an nl team i think the red sox can maybe go in there steamroll them and then just be done with it but just because of the just because of the fact that you play them i forget how many times a year uh it's it's just bound to happen they get yeah they get to know your tendencies and all that stuff 100 percent. like i don't know but moving on we got to see one game worth of Michael Chavis. <laughs> the ice horse returns. Oh he was back and now he's gone. Yep. You know, it was probably. one one singular day of JD Martinez having cold symptoms, got a test, negative, and then throw him right back in. And then Chavis were right back down. Chavis was yep. up here for no more than 24 hours. 
He was here for one game, and oh, then he's back to Worcester. Back to Worcester. Dude, which that's... I still feel bad for. I do too. I mean, you know, I, I mean, you're seeing how Bobby Dahlbeck is doing, and you know, it make it kind of makes you think for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Man, I don't know, but let me let me ask you this, right? Going with the team in general, right? Baseball Reference has this thing where they have the top twelve players for the team. Yeah. Okay. Right? You will not be able to guess the order of the the top 12 players of this team right now based strictly on war. Oh no. I I I hate war. Is, war is the I I war is the bane of my existence as, Why? as a baseball fan. Just cuz I don't think that it can effectively just the way that, you know, if you want to use it as a in in a certain way, I think it's fine. But I think the way that it's used throughout baseball is just a flawed metric because, you know, I look back to 2016 and the Red Sox went on an incredible run, you know, behind behind the Cy Young performance of Rick Porcello that year. Mm-hmm. And, you know, cruised to first place in the in the AL East and, you know, unfortunately fell, fell to the Indians later later that postseason. But, you know, we were we were on a really good roll with that team. And, you know, who was the man behind behind that whole operation? It was Mookie Betts. And he had an incredible season for for us. But then but MLB decides, oh, because Mike Trout has a higher war, we're going to give it to him, even though he's on a third place Angels team that that wins about 70, that wins about 70 something games. And it's like not even like if Mike Trout was like, you know, battle him to a wild card spot or anything like that. Literally, I think in almost any other metric, home run, average, RBIs, like Mookie Betts had higher stats. And the only thing that Mike Trout had higher was war. And it's just like, like, that's always just been something that's kind of like really kind of irked me. Cause it's like, Oh, it's the wins above replacement. It's like, well, who's he replacing? He's Mike Trout. He is an amazing player, but Mookie Betts is, is taking this team that, you know, in 2015 was a last place team and his performance is helping elevate them to the playoffs. Oh, so, I feel, so that that's what, that's my big thing with war. It's like, if you want to use it like in, in like in a sort of money ball statistic and, you know, maybe it's like how you decide, like, you know, what, what, uh, what, like what platoon corner outfielder you want to get, then maybe there's an advantage to that. But when you're, but when it becomes like the deciding factor in an MVP race, that's where it starts to really piss me off. Mm-hmm. All right. But let me just go through the top 12 real quick and you'll just All see right. how bad it is. Yeah. First, Nathan Eovaldi. Respect. I, I could understand it. J.D. Martinez. Okay. Christian Vasquez. Interesting, but, I mean, he has been doing all right. Nick Pavetta. Yeah, th- now, now I'm lost. <laughs> I mean, you'll I get, like... Pa- you'll get even more I, lost. I, I like Pavetta, but, like, I like how Pavetta's been doing this year, but I'll tell you a little bit about him, possibly later. Matt Barnes. Okay. Xander. Okay, Xander's been... Xander's a great player. Phillips Valdez. Interesting. <laughs> Franchi Cordero. Oh, boy. <laughs> God damn it. Garrett Whitlock. Whitlock's been, a, Whitlock's been a little, has been, you know, very surprising. I like him. Kevin Plawecki. Oh, come on. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Kevin Plawecki is, he's literally the backup. This is where I'm going to lose you hard with these last two. If, Austin if Bryce. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> You're really sending me off the deep end, man. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> Matt Andreese. I hate you. I hate your guts. <laughs> You're making this up. <laughs> I promise you I'm not making this up. <laughs> I hate your guts. <laughs> this is straight from baseball reference. And you and you <laughs> wonder why I hate war. You you were asking you, you, you were asking, oh, why do you hate war as a stat? Matt Andreese is one of is one of the top twelve players on this team. <laughs> Austin Bryce is one of the top 12 players on this team. Come on. Kevin Plowecki, are you serious? You 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 have the audacity to ask me why I hate war as a statistic, but then you list that as your defense? Are you serious? I never said that was a defense. I just said that was okay. there. Yeah, that's there. And that's a, and that proves my point 100% correct that war is a useless statistic <laughs> and it should be barred from the game of baseball. It does not prove anything. Oh my god, that was amazing. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. What just happened? What just happened? What do you mean? Doogie! Oh, shoot. Doogie, you beautiful man. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Three on home run for Verdugo. Let's go. Let's go, Doogie. Yeah. JD has a a chance to go, has has a chance to make up for it himself, but he's two strikes on him. Well, let's go. That's awesome. 
But going back, looking um, at this team right now with our batting averages, uh, I'm just going to go through them real quick. JD 433, Vasquez 414, Cordero 353. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I was joking about Cordero. I mean, you know, obviously, you know, after seeing what we got from for Benny, I was like, I was kind of iffy about him, especially, you know, the way he's performed as of late. He's been solid. He's been solid to start the year. So, I mean, you know, if he can be consistent throughout the year, well, that'll be, the, that'll get to be seen. Mm-hmm. Oh, JD just homered too. Let's go. Bang! JD, JD just homered to right. Let's go. Four wait, nothing. Wait, say it with me. Say it with me. Santa Maria. <laughs> <laughs> Bringing that one back after last year. All right. Yep. I, Xander. Called it too. I, I called it too. I, I was saying he's going back to back. Mm-hmm. Let's go. Xander, 333. Marvin Gonzalez, 250. Devers, 222. Kike needs to step it up at 212. Christian Arroyo, no one cares about. Verdugo yeah. just jumped up after that last hit, but 179. Renfro, 158. And then Bobby Dahlbeck, 095. Yeah, I mean, I was talking about how Mike Trout stole the MVP from Mookie in 2016, but it's but it's good to see that we have Walmart Mike Trout, uh, Hunter Renfro on our team. Uh, obviously, mm-hmm. he isn't producing right now, but uh, and uh, I call I call Hunter Renfro. Hold on, let me just I call Hunter Renfro Walmart Kevin Pillar. Nice, beautiful, beautiful man. <laughs> yeah, why are you on the Mets? Ugh, yeah, that, but going through the pitchers real quick, um, Austin Bryce, Hirokazu Saramura, Whitlock, Valdez, Barnes. Pavetta have yet to give up, up, up have yet to give up an earned run. And wow. most of them, Whitlock, Valdez, Barnes, and Pavetta have all pitched five innings. Nice. Ivaldi has a one four six ERA with twelve innings pitched. Okay. Darwinson a two four five. Tanner Houck a three. Andre Issa a three. Perez a five four. Erod a five four. Garrett Richards a ten twenty nine. Adam Onavino an eleven fifty seven. <laughs> and our guy Josh Taylor is at a fourteen seventy three. Oh Lord! <laughs> oh, isn't That's that a so... beautiful thing? I mean, you know, I mean, it could be worse. I remember, uh, I forget what year it was, but you know, a former Reds pitcher, Matt Latos. I don't know if you remember that guy. Uh, he was, he was like a, you know, he used to be behind like Bronson Arroyo in like those, you know, early twenty tens uh, Reds rotations. I remember mm-hmm. one off season, he goes to the Miami Marlins, and in his first start. He gets pulled after like you know not allowing a after allowing like five runs, but does not record an out. And his in his ERA was legit was actually infinity. infinity. His, mm-hmm. It was actually infinity. So, you know, it could be worse. It you could know, be it, worse. You know, right. it definitely could be worse. So, I mean, it, it's not infinity. It's so not infinity. that's for sure. That's for sure. He has gotten one singular out. Congratulations, Josh Taylor. Congratulations. Um, going on to a little more MLB news story that we got into on your show. Trevor Bauer calls out the media, and mm. he's being inspected for sticky substances. I can make a very inappropriate joke here, but insert Please your don't. own insert Please your own don't. joke here, pesky pole podcast fans. So, uh, the ML basically the MLB took away um, some of his baseballs, and they are investing him in right now. Um, well, Trevor Bauer said this in a tweet, so I'll just read it. LOL, always fun reading desperate and misleading clickbait headlines for national gossip bloggers. To translate fake journalist speak for y'all, it's unclear whether equals, I can't be bothered to look into it because it doesn't fit my narrative. Wonder where the article's about. Balls from every other pitcher being taken out of play in literally every other game this season. Also, LOL to MLB, who already has sources talking to gossip bloggers about supposedly confidential progress a week process, a week into the season. Thumbs up, y'all killing it. <laughs> so and this he's why, and this not is happy. Why Trevor, and this is why Trevor Bauer is becoming a favorite of mine. <laughs> he just don't care anymore. He doesn't. I love it. Like, yeah, no. Honestly, if if you feel like you're being targeted that much, and he wants to put that in his own hands, I mean, he's slowly winning all MLB fans over, but I mean, the people he might want to win over are the MLB and the MLB execs who kind of sign those paychecks. He does. But at that point, I mean, you know, he, I mean, becoming a fan favorite when he becomes such a fan favorite and he actually is able to produce, it's going to be tough to really, you know, have, have those execs like supplant him and do anything like that. Uh, And the thing, you know, I think a lot of people liked about him, what really got me into, uh, 
you know, into liking uh, Bauer as a, as a player. I, I had spoke on, I spoke on my show about why I, why I originally didn't like him. Cause I thought he was kind of a goofball because he cut himself with a drone before a playoff game. I was like, this guy's an idiot. Uh, yeah, he but, still is, but. Oh no, he's, he's still a goofball. Uh, but I remember he goes out and he ends up uh, and like, you know, he actually went on a tirade. I don't know how, how much, you know, about like BAM baseball advanced media or any of those or any of that group. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, so essentially what happened is like, you know, the ownership to like MLB rights, it's all, it's all kind of syndicated for like whatever through like one group and it's called baseball advanced media. And, you know, it, it's pretty much responsible for all the blackouts and all the, you know, and you know, all the problems with games that, you know, and other markets, that's, they're kind of the big reason behind it. And they kind of ownership of, of everything MLB wise. And, you know, the big, the big, the big plus to that was, you know, by getting it all in one location, you make a ton of money in the process, but I, but I've said this before, you lose a ton of fans because of it, because, you know, people aren't able to, you know, if you want to see a compilation of like, of like Steph Curry, like, like, you know, of like Steph Curry highlights in the, in the, in the NBA, you can find those with one click of a button and you'll see like, and you'll see like, you know, maybe like actual NBA highlights, but you'll also see fan highlights as well. Mm-hmm. If you want to get, but if you want to see like, I don't know, I don't know what, why you'd want to see it, but maybe like a Raphael Devers highlights or Xander Bogart's highlights. Maybe you could find a couple of, uh, of like fan highlights, but if it's not like MLB highlights, the fan highlights have to be very careful because MLB will strike those videos down and say, and say it's a copyright strike. Oh, I've already told you, I got copyright strike by the MLB on one of my first podcast episodes. Yeah. My, when Ari was still on the show, we, it was during quarantine. Yeah. We had nothing to talk about. There was no baseball happening. So what we did is we did our top 20 at each position. We did outfield, third, second, short, first pitcher catcher yeah right and we got to first baseman and i decided you know what? i'm gonna put some highlights in yeah we're gonna talk when we're talking about the players mm-hmm. i literally put in one highlight per Play. player that's it one one singular oh, yeah. highlight no it, that's it and they struck me for a highlight of paul goldschmidt which i'm sitting here like of all the is- players yeah, it's like Paul Goldschmidt. That that's the one. That's the one you needed. You needed to protect so so badly. That was and pathetic. It, no, it's it's so pathetic. And I mean, you know, I think I talked to you about it before. It's why Dodger Films isn't allowed to, you know, isn't allowed to do games anymore. It's R.I.P. Why, yeah, like you know, he he was like a huge spokesperson for baseball. He would go to Dodger games. He would do a ton of stuff. And like you know, he he'd film his experience there. It'd be like it was an, it was always a cool thing. Like I'm not a Dodgers fan, but you know, you saw him at the Dodgers games and like you know how interactive he was. I mean, Vince Scully even like pointed him out one time when he caught a home run ball, and mm-hmm. it was like this whole thing. I know like Zach Hampel is like doing is kind of doing that right now, but he's almost kind of become like a like almost like an employee of MLB. Like and like I don't know how how involved how involved with it he is. I don't know if he's able to been I don't know if he's able to get like past some of that somehow, but. And I think it's because he doesn't like film any like any game action going on. I think that's what saves him a lot. So I think that's I think that's the big thing too. He films a lot of stuff pre-game and he doesn't do like in-game stuff. And I'm just like, I'm like, show like I'm like, it's no, it's not a big deal if you're like showing the in-game experience. It's not like you're recording the entire game. If you record like a like a quick little snippet of a guy hitting a ball and like your reaction to it, that should be okay. That shouldn't be like an end all be all. Mm-hmm. No, yeah. Um it was MLB Advanced Media caught me for what is this twenty four seconds, mm-hmm. and that's, that's it. It was a it was a it, it's oh my god it's and pathetic I mean, and yeah and you're a YouTube channel with how many subscribers thirty two subscribers thirty two this this video got at this, seven at, views yeah i mean at this very moment it's 32 subscribers i mean back then it might have been like what maybe like 10 or 12 it was probably. like 11 yeah exactly so like mlb is trying to cut down on people that much like like so i mean if if they're trying to cut down on you on you imagine what they're doing to the big channels and i mean unfortunately you know you look at basketball and football channels on youtube they're huge like gigantic mm-hmm. like there are empires built on them. baseball channels I don't know. I don't really know that many that are like above a million subscribers. Like, I don't think they like exist because, you know, baseball will just cram down their agenda on them. And, you know, you just can't like you just can't share like why these guys are so great. Mm -hmm. Man, it's it's sad. It's so it's terrible. Mm -hmm. You know, but we keep we keep moving on. I've just had to learn not to not to use it. Yeah. You know, it's it sucks, but we we keep going. But by the way, I just I just looked at this. Shout out to the people who have 
been watching my videos so much on Spotify and iTunes because right now we are at 119 downloads through April. Oh, let's so go. and that and I I missed an episode. I even skipped one, That's and yet awesome. I'm almost I'm almost to where yeah I'm gonna get about we could get about 350 downloads this this month. That would be a record for me. Let, let's go. That'd be sick. fans. If you are Keep listening on YouTube, go over to Spotify and help me out or iTunes, whichever one. Let me set a record month real quick while missing two episodes for the memes. Why not? Imagine that. This this is the month I get the most downloads, and I only upload six out of eight times. Yeah, <laughs> literally. That's going to be funny as hell. Yeah. So, Jill Musgrove. Yeah. No, no, for the first time in Padre history. Now, I was, um, like I said, I'm in this fancy baseball league. We ain't doing too bad, by the way, so far. But um, I was, one of the other guys in the league is a big, um, is a Padres podcast. Mm -hmm. Right? And he live streamed himself during the ninth inning. And my dude lost his (laughs) you-know-what after they got that. Because I never even knew the Padres never had a no-hitter. Yeah. That's just insane for me to think about. Yeah, well, I mean, I, th- I, I'd have to look it up, but I mean, Johan Santana got it for the Mets, you know, which as a franchise that's been around like I think you know almost as long. Uh, let me look it up. Mets no hitter. I think it was 2012, if I'm thinking correctly. Yeah, Mets no hitter. Yep, and on June 1st, 2012, Johan Santana uh, pitched the pitched no hitter for the for New York Mets. I re- I remember like watching that go down, and you know. Uh, the Mets are actually my NL team. Like if, like, you know, if the Red Sox are out of it, like, and there's a, and like they're in it, then yeah, I'll root for the Mets in the playoffs. Like, that's just what I do. Like, but mm-hmm. if the Red Sox are in it and they're facing the Mets, it's like, screw the Mets. Like, that's mm-hmm. how you just treat it. That's how you treat that kind of like a rivalry. No, uh, screw, but, the, screw the Mets. <laughs> but yeah, so they're my NL team. And I remember watching that and being like super hyped for it. And I for, I forget if there's any other teams that still, that still haven't had one yet. I would have to look into that. But yeah, the but yeah, they ended up getting a no hitter. Joe Musgrove, you know, it's actually cool that he's a San Diego kid too. So mm-hmm. it's a, so he's a local kid, you know. Probably I don't I mean I don't I mean the Padres probably when he was growing up they probably had like Tony Gwynn and some of those guys on the team. So you know he he hopefully was a Padres fan, which would be a really cool story to see. Maybe hopefully it wasn't like a Dodgers or Giants fan just because of the team sucking. Uh, but you know, it's a, it's an amazing story. And I mean, you know, it's awesome to see for the Padres and, you know, frankly, it's really cool for me to see the Padres, a team that for so long has been, you know, like, or as long as I've been, you know, a very diehard baseball fan, they've just been a team in the gutter and -hmm. they're starting to finally kind of come out of this and start to get a little competitive again. Exactly. And um, here's the thing, this game would have been a perfect game if he didn't hit Joey Gallo in the fourth inning. Yeah. That was the only thing that took it from, he didn't walk anyone. It was That's great. Crazy. And just reading that, it reminded me. So I was playing um, MLB The Show yeah, um, uh, yesterday, two days ago, and I was running with the Sox, obviously. I'm pitching, oh, yeah. with, I'm pitching with Chris Sale. I have a perfect <laughs> game going into the ninth inning. Get two outs, final out, ground out to Rafael Devers, throws the ball, Bobby Dahlbeck, error, loses perfect game. Well, at least there's some, at least there's some, realist, <laughs> some realism. <laughs> Hey, his defense hasn't been too bad. Don't I'm, make I'm, me... I'm not, not talking about Dobbick. I'm talking about Devers. <laughs> yeah, that too. It was a really terrible throw. Yeah. So, so I mean, you know, at least, at least you can say the game's realistic, which is good to know. Mm-hmm. No, yeah. I'm. Damn. Yeah. But wait, I, so it would have been cool to see perfect game. Are you on? Are you on? Are, you're on PlayStation, correct? Yes, PS4. Yeah. Well, I'm. I'm an. I'm an Xbox person, and I am psyched to see that MLB the show is finally coming to Xbox. I am so pumped. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, no Xbox is gross. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I've been on, I've been on Xbox since the 360. I got it in like middle school. I'm hooked, man. I'm sorry. No, uh, but that that's a completely different debate that we could have, though. Uh, but all I know is that you know I haven't had a modern baseball game that I've been able to play since MLB 2K13. Mm-hmm. So I am just pumped to finally get into to finally you know play a new baseball game that's actually like realistic and like you know has the actual rosters i don't need to like create players and like and like have to do simulated seasons anymore yeah i can actually i can finally you know have a have an xbox game for baseball that's not terrible like rbi baseball that game is 
garbage. Oh, gross. I, I never I never picked it up. I saw I saw like I saw like graphics for it and stuff like that. I was like, I was like, this is a travesty. And mm-hmm. MLB the show is where it's at, and it's finally coming to Xbox, and I couldn't be more thankful. Mm-hmm. No, I don't blame you. It should have been on Xbox all along, but Xbox still sucks. Yeah. Here's here's the thing. Um what was I gonna say? I don't know, I just completely forgot. But <laughs> um going on, we saw another historic thing happen just yesterday. Yeah. Uh Arizona Diamondbacks guy Tim LaCastro sets a record for 28 steals in a row to start off a career. Never been caught. And this apparently, and you just think, oh, he stole. Um, he stole some bases. Good job. Like it's a record, yeah. but it's not exactly the best record out there. They are sending his shoes to the National Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum. That's insane. <laughs> that is nuts. All right. Yeah, he I said, mean, Oh, go ahead. He said, obviously, you want to get into Cooperstown. That's what you dream about as a kid winning the World Series and getting into Cooperstown. So yeah. having my cleats there is unfathomable to me. Yeah. No, I mean, it's insane the fact that, you know, his cleats are going to go to Cooperstown after only 28. Uh, I mean, I don't know how many games he's played, but, you know, the dude has 28 has 28 uh, consecutive steals, has never been caught. I mean, and you think about some of the some of the all time great base runners in this league. I mean, you think of guys like Ricky Henderson, you know, more recently, maybe guys like Billy Hamilton and the fact that guys like that, you know, were, were caught before this guy. It's incredible. Like to think of that. Mm hmm. I mean, Ricky Henderson literally had over 100 steals in a season. Mm. Like, and Damn. I think he did that like multiple times. Like in, mm. like when he was in, when he, when he was like in his 40s, I think he got like 60 stolen bases, and that, when that was considered like, that was considered like a down year. That was considered him like fading out of his prime. Yes. Like that's insanity. That's, that's insane. Like, but congrats to um, LeCastro. He gave oh, the yeah. base to his mother, oh, which nice. is really cool. Yeah, that's actually dope. But other than that, we got one more segment for you guys. Obviously, I had to – I got in the DMs and I asked the Pesky Pole Podcast Nation a question. Did you see it? I saw the DM. I I did not get a chance to respond to it though. No, because you're going to give me your response now. I said, give me the most overrated player in the MLB today. Okay. And we're going to go through, because I got, what, two, four, six, eight, ten different responses. And I just need you to say if they're overrated or underrated. All Alrighty. right. For me, one guy that's not on here that I'm going to say right now, and you're going to tell me if it's overrated, underrated, or just right, Bryce Harper. I think Bryce Harper, I mean, the contract that he got was insanity. I mean, but you just that's just ba- that's just how baseball money works. Uh I don't know. I think Bryce Harper is, you know, he's done, he's gotten those awards before. I think that, you know, lately he's had some down seasons, but as a player, I think, you know, you got to put some respect on his name. So you would say just right. I'd say it's probably just right with him. I'm going over it. I'd, I'd say just right. I mean, it's, I mean, obviously he's had, he hasn't been as great, but you know, he's still a, he's still a very talented player. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, the old freshman. The old freshman screw. <laughs> uh, I hate I hate them. All right, next, Jose Bautista. In terms of his career, because like In, pretty much over now. I said I when I put this out, I said this year, but I'm we'll we'll say for this one career. I mean, when he was on and he had and his and like the totality of his career. I mean, as a total player, then I mean you. I don't think you look at him like that, but. During like the four to five year stretch that he would that he had with those Toronto Blue Jays, that was as legit as legit could get. I mean, yes. he was he was you know one of the best hitters in the MLB. You know, once you know, I think like I probably by like I don't know maybe seventeen eighteen, I think he you know started to tail off, and once he left the Blue Jays, it was completely downhill from there. I think he had a walk off home run with the Mets, but like nothing really serious after he left them. Uh, but you know that's just but uh, for the prime of his career, that was legit. Uh, totality of a career i don't know it's tough yeah claver torres i'd say overrated i'm not i mean maybe it's because he's a yankee i'm just not the biggest glaber guy staying with the yankees i had three people say the same one aaron judge i mean he hasn't really been that that same guy since his rookie year of you know when he went on that pure dominance 
And he also deals with a lot of injuries issues. I mean, you know, I, I saw, I saw people on ESPN talking about it and he literally went out and, you know, and I, he's now already, you know, missing games with a, with an unidentified like side soreness. So it's like, if he could be on the field and, and do what he does, then it'd be legit. Uh, but, you know, frankly, you know, until he can do that, it's, you know, he's, you know, more overrated than not. Mm-hmm. I love the guy, but you know, he's just, he just can, you know, if he, he's just not be it, he's just hasn't been able to stay as healthy. Yeah, exactly. Trevor Bauer. Come on. That's my guy. <laughs> uh, no, but uh, I mean, the dude want to say young last year. I mean, I know it was a COVID shortened year, uh, but no, I, I will kind of say this. I, uh, ba- Bauer has uh, he's been performing better with the Dodgers. I mean, he obviously had an incredible year with the Reds last year. Until that year with the Reds, so he de- he has definitely not not been you know the guy that everyone's you know hyped him up to be. You know, mm-hmm. he earned that contract in that one season with Cincinnati. That's where he earned all that money yeah. because like before that in Cleveland, he wasn't like as 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 good of a guy. I mean, before he like before he went to Cincinnati, he was like a two three guy in that rotation behind Kluber. I think. Uh, he might have been behind Carrasco at, at one point. Yeah, like he wasn't as high up as a guy. He might have, I think, in I think in Cleveland he was like a three four starter. I he I think he was ahead of Clevenger, but even Clevenger got better towards the end. Mm-hmm. But I would I I'd say Bowers, in terms of right now, it's overrated. But I think he has a but I think he has a chance to set the record straight. I think after last year, I'm putting him just right. Yeah, I I, mm-hmm. I want to put him just right, but yeah. All right, um, one of the guys from the. Gombridge podcast, Steve Brady, <laughs> my dude says Tatis. Nah, man, Tatis is Tatis is you know I I I dig Tatis like big time. I mean, he hurt himself he hurt himself recently, so you know we'll see if we'll see if that one season he had was just a fluke. I mean, he's still very young, so you know pitchers could figure him out, and if he struggles, then that could be an issue. Mm-hmm. Uh, but from what we've seen so far, it looks like he's just right. I I I think so. Mm-hmm. Ari, my boy, Alex. Bregman. I'm, I'm a thousand percent with him on this one. Yeah, I think so. I mean, Bregman, you know, in you know, when he was, you know, in the 2017, 18 run, he was on top of his game, but you know, he just hasn't really been, you know, as consistent since. I mean, there's a reason why. All right. A 35 year old Yuri Guriel does not <laughs> have the greatest year of his career at the age of 35. Yeah. If there is no Trash can. Outside sources involved. Trash can. Yes. All right. The yeah. last two. Francisco Lindor. Uh, you know, I think he's earned it. I think he deserved the contract. And I I mean, you know, I, I I'd say he's I say he's Lindor is just right. I, mm-hmm. I think Lindor is very is very deserving. Final one, which I don't know what the hell my guy Carson was thinking about. Mike Trout. Bum, no. Uh, uh, no. Uh, no, uh, Mike Trout, obviously, you know, amazing player. I think the problem, I, I, I've i talked about it, I think, on my show or possibly even your show before. Uh, it's the deal with Mike Trout syndrome. I, mm-hmm. I don't know if I've talked about it on your show. I've definitely talked about it on mine before. And the, the thing with Mike Trout syndrome is that, you know, the MLB, for some reason, doesn't know how to market players other than Mike Trout. And, yes. You know, when you look at the NFL and how they're able to market players, you can market players like Tom Brady, Pat Mahomes, even running backs. You can go into like Zeke Elliott, d- different guys like that. And like you can, you know, you can market, you can almost market a player every position in the NFL, which is incredible. In the NBA, it's the same thing. Like you can name me, like I could probably name you like the start, like one of the starting shooting guard, guards on the Oklahoma City Thunder. Cause it, and that says something because they suck now. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, well, it, it not even like suck, but they're just not as, they're not like the team that they once were. It's like, Oh, like Shy Gildas Alexander. That's a guy that like some NBA fans will, will be like, oh shoot, I kind of know that guy. But with like MLB, you know, you ask some other fans like who Trevor Bauer is, like you ask like an average baseball fan, they may not be as as familiar, but you know, the only and the only guy that people really know is Mike Trout. And some people don't even know that, which is in which is incredible. So mm-hmm. no, Mike Trout is definitely legit, but the problem you do have though is that MLB just needs to figure out ways to market them. It looks like they're trying to do that with, with Tatis, so that will be very interesting to watch. Uh, but, you know, I but you know, you just got to figure out a way to market your players better. That's the that's the issue with Mike Trout, not that he's overrated. Uh, absolutely. And I, I think along with Tatis, they need to start doing that with Verdugo. Like, that's Ivan. Verdugo needs to be an all-star this year if he can stay, <laughs> at least to the point where he was last year. But 
I mean, with I that being to. said, um, I may or may not have just texted Adam and just said because obviously Adam is known as the French Cordero hater, and I said French Cordero oh, is yeah. batting three fifty three. Take that for data. All right. <laughs> Well, David Fisdale reference. Why not? All right. I need one good thing that happened this week. Something outside of baseball. Outside of baseball. That's a good one. I mean, you know, you know, I managed to get through. I managed to get through a really tough week of school this week. Uh, you know, it looks like next week is like this week for me is going to be much better and you know a lot more, a lot a lot more stress free. Uh, you know, I'm. You know, I think uh, in like, you know, just a little bit over a month, done with done with finals, done with school. Mm-hmm. It's going to be enjoying a very nice summer. I can't wait to p- do more episodes with you, man. Do some Absolutely. more episodes of my own with Down to the Wire. You know, do some summer sessions, do some stuff like that. I'm pumped for that, too. So, uh, you know, I, I kind of kind of like I think uh, nailed down a, a summer job I'm looking at right now. So things nice. are looking up right now. I'm very happy with the thing with the way things are going. So uh, I'm pretty pumped, man. Man, absolutely. For me. Jason Tatum dropped 53 the other day. Jason Tatum is a grown man. Yeah, cannot can that I mean that is definitely something to admire. Jason Tatum is the man and you know deserves that respect. And he and he showed why last night. Absolutely. All right. That being yeah, said the other day, frankly, my bad. Mm-hmm. With that being said, already shameless plugs out of the way. Your stuff will be in the description. You got anything else to say to the people before we head Thank out? Thank you very much. That's it. Uh you know, guys, uh, you know. Yeah, I, I think that's it. I mean, you know, we'll see you guys next time. Uh, you know, go Sox. You know, let's 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 keep this thing going. Hopefully. Let's pray. Right now they up four nothing still. So let's pray they can just keep that going. Hope watch, they're gonna lose now that we said that. But thank you Hold guys. The line, boys. <laughs> Hold the line, build the wall. No, I can't say that. I'll get to my <laughs> All right. No. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for watching. God bless you guys. Hopefully you guys are having an amazing Sunday if you're watching this with me on the YouTube premiere. We'll see you guys next time.